Hello and welcome to episode 496 of Ferg on the Freak. I'm that bloke from Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can follow me on Twitter at AndrewLP. Join me as always is the glorious Leak Freak. You can also find it on Twitter at Leak Freak and on the red carpet. Well, you know, I'm not quite on the red carpet, but I'll tell you this. It is wet out here. Too, I'm I'm hiding behind that fire hose reel. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been just pouring in with my natural surroundings. It's been pouring down all day in Western Sydney. Yep. Um, but, you know, we're resilient people. We'll get through it. We'll get through it. The, the arrogance will get you through. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, the highlights so far from the red carpet is there's a bunch of bunch of chits with it, uh, chicks with their gear out and a bunch of blokes wearing exactly the same suit as everybody else. So that's the red carpet covered. Yeah, it's weird how, like, dudes basically don't have a great deal of variety that they can wear as formal wear, hey? Yeah, they're either going to um, Ed Harry menswear mm. or YD or other shops, businesses like that. It's just all suits. Yeah, and a black tie. Yeah, yeah. So, and to be fair, it's pretty easy, but I don't know. I, I just think that it's time, 2023, there should be more variety in men's formal wear. Yeah, more more Bellamy get-ups. Yeah, remember that that uh, jacket that was, he wore. That was, that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, he's but that's the reason with there's this. no variety, because you get someone like me that complains and then says, a fucking weird jacket you're wearing. That's why it is. Well, that's all right. Kalen Pong is here with the uh, with the wife of his manager, so that's um, that's a bit controversial. <laughs> that's a funny way to put it. Yeah, um, <laughs> she probably does there. the bookkeeping. It's, it's completely accurate too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so grand final week, we're a little further into the week. Brisbane arrived in Sydney today, which is pretty early, which surprised me a little bit. I thought that they'd kind of fly down for maybe the awards and then fly back, but they, they look like they sort of have now situated themselves in Sydney for the rest of the week, um, which, I don't know, I found that a bit strange. I, I think that any time that you come out of your regular sort of preparation for a game leading into a grand final, it's going, it's doing something that's different and, you know, how that's going to affect your team, you never know. Some For some teams, it might make them really lock in and be prepared and get away from the hype around, you know, Brisbane and stuff. It might work in that sense, but you just never know. Like, we're going to find out, I guess. I'd like to see them get fully integrated in their opponent's heartland. So just hear they, news yeah. stories for the for the next um, two days about how they've been at Panthers Leagues Club eating Krispy Kreme donuts and just smashing the uh, one-hand bandits. Wouldn't it be weird if, like, they just did that? Like, if they went to Penrith and just hanging out at the club every day, that would be weird. That would be weird. Yeah. But that's what they should be doing. Get in there and say, the only way to beat a panther is to think like a panther. (laughs) And the only way to do that is to get in its habitat and do what it does. (laughs) Oh, shit. Be, By the way, I don't know if you saw my my tweet about the radio interviews I heard. No, no. Okay, so I just happened to have been in the car the last couple of nights around six o'clock, and there was someone on the radio, and and it's you know I wouldn't have to give you three guesses as to who it was, but we don't need to name the individual. And they're they're interviewing. Yesterday they interviewed uh, Isaiah. And I swear one of the questions they asked him was, well, it's not really questions, they're statements, you know. You're a pretty yeah. good team, aren't you? Like, that was one, <laughs> that was one of the things. <laughs> and then... Like, it's, just, it's just dawned on them. Yeah. And, and Hang then, on, weren't you guys in this grand final thing last year? <laughs> and, then the, 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 and I don't know what this is about. The media is the only people I ever hear mention in this. Oh, you're not probably not going to get all of Sydney behind you. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a bit of tall poppy syndrome, isn't it? And it's like just stupid questions, you know. And I'm so listening to these stupid questions yesterday. And then, like, at the end of – pretty much towards the end of the interview, it's like – so it must be it must be amazing to see what you are all doing in the community, especially Brian Toto, Stephen Crichton and Jerome Lewis showing the – 
the troubled youth of some areas in Western Sydney and Penrith, like, that you can succeed in life. And I'm like, and I'm, <laughs> to I'm like, what? What's he talking impoverished, about? impoverished nation out there. Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is he talking about? Right. So wow. anyway, I sort of suppressed my, my, I don't know, even know what it was. I was kind of incredulous at, at the whole thing. So I get in the car today because I'm going out to, to get Macca's feed. And uh, same guy on the radio talking to Nathan Cleary. Basically, same question. <laughs> you just copy paste. The fucking same questions. <laughs> talking about the impoverished youth of Western Sydney. <laughs> it's like Nathan Cleary grew up with them. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, it's just they're like just you the know, worst. I think I think those questions are like the tier one questions that you anyone from the age of twelve up would ask when they first get to meet a rugby league player. Yeah, so like, let's start with the most basic level stuff. Then the next tier would be things like um, you you don't want to go too in depth, but it'd be. Yeah, things like, you know, what's it like being a part of this team? How do you feel? Things like, like still nonsense questions, garbage yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so you keep going along in that sort of a, of a line there. Um, looks like we're off the red carpet. Yeah. And, By the way, uh, we're watching the Dally M's as we record this. Yeah, this is, this is, this is a live commentary on the, uh, of, of the Dally M's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we've done this a few times before, to be honest. We've done. I know we definitely we did one on YouTube. Yeah, we did a live one once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, one of the things I asked Nathan Cleary, oh, he basically said, and I'm paraphrasing here, oh, you're you're rich and famous. How do you handle that? <laughs> <laughs> With my money. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh shit. So yeah, uh, I and. So the first night I was kind of incredulous. The second night I was like, this guy's a, a lemon. What an idiot. Um, so, yeah, and now we are recording and we're watching the Dally M's. And hopefully it's, I mean, the Dally M's are pretty fucking boring. Let's be, let's be honest. I went to the Dally M's one year. The year it came back after, remember there was a, that year in the early 2000s where um, the players boycotted it? Yeah, 2003. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the 2004 Dalliance, yep. and I can't remember where it was at. It was somewhere in Sydney, and um, we sat up up in the bleachers, up in the top stairs, looking down on a bunch of um, very highly paid uh, humans all eating meals, and we weren't allowed to eat or drink a fucking thing. <laughs> Sit and watch. Just watch. Yeah. <clears throat> it, was like, it was like an inverse zoo. Yeah, that, I, I guess that would be very like, strange. Like we're there watching, but if anything, we're the ones that are <laughs> we're the ones in prison. We're not allowed to leave. We're not allowed to eat anything. It was yeah, all backwards. That, that was when they were holding it at Sydney Town Hall, and they were making a big deal out of it being That's at right, Sydney Town Hall. Yeah, and, and then they never went back there again. No, no. Do I remember? <laughs> remember they were like, I remember one year at, early on when they went back to Sydney Town Hall, and they were like. And there's a pipe organ here, and it's like 115 years old. And it was supposed to be like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know? Who gives a, and they played it. And it's like, yeah, we want to hear pipe. Who, who's ever sat around and said, you know what would make this a real party? Let's play some fucking pipe organ music. Well, I'm sure someone did back in 1813. <laughs> I imagine, yeah, they probably did, actually. Huh? <laughs> there was probably someone in 1813 that was like, these fucking kids with their new age fandangle pipe organs. <laughs> Back next? in my day, we used to bang sticks together. <laughs> That's right. You don't know what it's like. The impoverished youth of today, of 1813. Um, so now we're watching a musical act. I I can't even imagine what sort of music they're singing. Pretty sure this I is, hope a, that this it's is good. Uh, This is Amazing Grace. I possibly. <laughs> Either that or it's Live in La Vida Voca. Is it that one? It's one of those two. One of the two. One of the two. Actually, I think... you know what it is? It's the mm. national anthem. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> with fireworks and shit. <laughs> um, this. The fireworks are a bit pissy. It looks like someone's got an angle grow and they're just occasionally hitting you a hubcap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does actually. It does. Now, who do you think is going to win the Dally M? Um, well, for me, it is it is between Sean Johnson and Payne Haas. I'm I'm going to go with Payne Haas. Okay. I, I think, I mean, the, the media's been on Sean Johnson for ages. Mm. Um, and, like, I the weird thing for me is I thought Dylan Edwards would probably win it just because you know how the <clears throat> Penrith have won a lot of games? There's a fair chance he will. The problem is, though, um, there's a lot of players in the Panthers' side who can take points off him. That's true. That's true. That's not so much of a risk for um, Sean Johnson, anyway. Yeah. Um, there is a chance, though, that that, that could impact pain, especially with um, Reese Walsh's form at the end of the year. Yep. Yep. And Adam Reynolds stayed fit for the majority of the season as well, so he'll be taking a few away as well. So yeah. it would be good to see a forward, legit forward, actually get the award. They don't get it too often. No. And he has been insanely good this year, Payne Haas. Yeah, he has been very, very good. Um, But it's a, it's a bit of a weird award because, like, I mean, there's a lot of very good players on the list, but every so often there's one where you're like, how did he get it, you know? Or why did he get it in that season? So we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird how some people have never had it mm. and are absolute legends of the game. Yeah, yeah. I find that very strange. But, you know, at like, what are you going to do? I, th- I think that that over time, is going to be the reason why the Players Association Award is going to be a little bit held in a little bit higher esteem. Maybe not by the corporate media, but who cares what they think. Um, but just by people in rugby league in general. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll find out. We'll see who wins it. But, yeah, I I think Dylan Edwards. Um, but I'd I, at the same time, I'd be kind of shocked if it wasn't Sean Johnson, just because the media was so on him for probably the second half of the year, I reckon. Yeah, they were. Um, what do you think the ratio will be tonight of um, <laughs> replay shots in full, in actual motion versus replay shots in slow motion? Oh, well, come on by what we're watching. <laughs> That's... A lot of slammer. It's like they said, listen, if we take 80% of our game footage, we slow it down. Slower. We can, we can draw this whole fucking event out for like two hours. Yeah. Slower, slower. <laughs> Just, if, it, if I was running the Dalliums, I'd be like, I want the whole show done within an hour. <laughs> Why do they do it the slow motion of Dylan who has been smacked on the head by his teammates? That's a good question. And the slow motion looks like he's being belted, like punished, not being applauded, because he's sort of wincing his eyes at the same time when they're going, smack, smack, smack. It, please, as long as we don't get Andrew Abdo come out at any point during the night and try to speak, I'll be happy. You come in and say, to me, a grudge is nowhere else but a place to park your car. <laughs> That's my best 12th man I've got. I'm done now. Let's move on. He's going to acknowledge the fucking 194 assists that Dylan Edwards did during the year. I hope so. I want to. I want to hear him talk about how many tackle involvement someone had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good and bad, all up. Just put them all together. So, has oh. there been any any news in the rugby league world that's been going on? Apart there from was the an Grand article. That, there was an article that came out today about the referee of the grand final and how the Panthers have got an astonishingly good record with him in the last three years compared to the Broncos. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of retorted to that on Twitter today, saying, "I'm not a fan of Andrew Abdo talking. Um, it's a good thing we're doing this now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a fan of using." win percentages for a club against a referee as the basis of any sort of um, statement of anything. It doesn't prove anything. Because mm-hmm. what you're kind of alleging out of, all, out of all of that is the referee is in the pocket of certain clubs. And yeah. I think that's that's a foul assumption to make. Yes. And, um, yeah, this, 
furthermore, I mean, there's, I don't, I don't even have to go to Rugby League Project to check the stats on the stats on this one, but I would, I would imagine that there wouldn't be too many referees that Penrith have got a less than sixty percent win record with in the last three years. <laughs> So, you know, what's your fucking point? Yeah, and it would have to be something like, well, this guy really only ref them like four times, like six times, you know, and he's they lost a couple of games under him, and that's about as bad as it gets. So, like, just silly. Just, like, And that's the analysis we're getting from the corporate media these days where... That's all they've it's, got. Yeah, it's just very... It's like you can dismantle it in a second. Um, and they get pissy when you do that for the most part. That's right. So if you want genuine, thorough analysis of what goes on, there's a website out there called um, the Rugby League Eye Test. Mm -hmm. Check them out. They're fucking amazing. Mm. Um, That's where you get. And they'll show you how plays break down and what they do on the field to to explain how things work and why they do. And guess what? None of it's because of the referees. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. The players are skilled at what they do. That's how they win games. The referee doesn't decide it. So, you know, ignore that stats and that bullshit drama that the uh, the Telegraph obviously came up with. But, yeah, that was that was the only thing I saw today. Remember there was, a, there was a, year, a year about, I think it was about four or five years ago, where the media was pushing like, oh, all the best teams get the, get all the calls go their way. <laughs> but then the Roosters were the most penalised team in the competition. Yes. And, and, and they, they have been for a long time, even yeah. when they were winning premierships and playing in grand finals and stuff like that. Um, they were still one of the, if not the highest penalised club, one of the three highest penalised clubs in the NRL mm-hmm. consistently. Yeah. It, it, just just terrible analysis. <laughs> yeah, atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. Um, Andrew Abdo still talking. Yeah, what's he? He's been two minutes now, and I bet you he said absolutely nothing. No, there's been no substance here. Yeah. Um, if anything, this is probably a application for, um, you know, an opportunity to run the International Rugby League. And at the moment, he's going gangbusters. He's because everyone it. looks bored. He's, he's even yeah. got Jared Croker bored. He is absolutely killing it. <laughs> he's got him at the pub. He's probably telling one of the best stand-up comedy. Our routines in the in the world. Do you reckon that we're just not hearing him go? So all right, I'm fucking shit faced, mate. I have been on the fucking on coke all night. I wake up, I'm naked, and we're just not seeing it. We're just not hearing it. And you should have seen the horse next to me. I know. I'm not talking about a woman. I'm talking about an actual horse. I don't know how it got there. But boy, welcome to the wink stand. <laughs> Oh, These God. players are not entertained. No, no, they're not. It, it's just crazy to me that they do it year after year. Like, who is the Dalling M's for? Because it's not for the people watching at home because it's fucking boring. It's not for the players because the players find it fucking boring. Like, if it's just a TV event, I get that. But can we just, like, make it, can a we TV make event. it interesting? Yeah. Uh, Andrew Abdo's just gone. Um, he just got whisked away out the back really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Or hopefully he quit. <laughs> I don't think we're that lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't see people clap. That's how I know he didn't quit. <laughs> That's right. There's just there's just dead silence <laughs> and quiet. This is like, has he gone? Has he gone? <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um the only issue with not having sound on, because that's what we're going with here, is we don't know what award they're talking about or what, what any of the uh, hosts are talking about. Yeah, that's true. I sh- <laughs> and honestly, I'm here for it. There's nothing too bad about that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Racy McGregor's on the on the uh, podium at the moment. She obviously won last year. They're doing a, a replay of her getting her award last year, but that wasn't in slow motion, so... Um, Big ups to, to Fox Sports there. Yeah. I thought they might have done a slide-mo of her getting the medal put around her neck. But no, nah, yeah. they, they opted against it. They're not going to use it all up the slow mo straight away. They're really uh, padding it out. I, you know, <laughs> the um, I saw the grand final winner's rings today. They look very nice. Uh, on one side of the ring, like the top of it's got all like, I, I, my guess is they're not real diamonds. 
but it looks like diamonds on top of it. And then on one side of the ring, they've got the player's number. And then on the other side of the ring, it's got a kangaroo and an emu, um, which it's a very basic design, but it, it looked really nice. Kangaroo uh, and emu. Yeah, yeah. And they said that uh, Anthony Albanese had input into it, which I don't believe for one fucking second. What's his input going to be? <laughs> make, make it a ring that you can wear. Good idea, Anthony. Yeah. Let's do that. And it'd be good if you could put it on your finger. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. But the rings looked really nice. So whoever wins them will be really happy about it. Made me think about the rings that they gave out during um, the COVID affected season, and where they had like all of these weird symbols on the outside of it, which kind of looked a little bit fucked. Um, but you know, they can't all be winners, I guess. That's true. Um, yeah, the, the company that made them initially was uh, what Z and Z Jewelers, and yes, I remember that because back when they had big league magazines in the nineties, Z and Z Jewelers had a uh, an advert in those magazines all the time of the uh, watches and, and jewelry stuff that you could get through mm. them. Um, and then never saw them for ages, and all of a sudden we found out that they were making the the Premiership rings. Mm. Yeah. Hey, do you know one of the things that uh, I – I don't know if people know this or I've talked about it. I used to collect the – you know the membership badges from clubs, the little key ring badge sort of things? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I used to collect them. And the reason that it, it reminded me of them is because they were made by certain companies. And I remember ringing up the company once that made them because I wanted to see if they had like, you know, boxes of stock out the back because I was buying these things on uh, eBay for a long time and i was looking for ones that were you know from as far back as i could get i think the oldest one i ended up having was from the bulldogs and i can't remember what year it was but it was it was like 1964 or 54 or something crazy like that um and yeah so i used to and i had heaps of dragons ones because there was a lot of dragons ones around had a lot of north sydney ones because they were cheap um, and I was trying to get. <laughs> they probably uh, had been sitting in a box out the front of the local south. I just walk past and take one. They're free. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> um, you got one every time you got a membership to Manly Leagues Club. And... <laughs> oh, that'll go down well. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. All their fans are dead. So the and I I was trying to get every single year of the Panthers, obviously, because I had a few of them that I was given um, from family. So. Uh, but I and I ended up stopping uh, um, collecting them at one point. But I'll ha- I don't even know where they've got to. I'll have to find them because it was a really cool little hobby, and it's this just this part of like almost like rugby league history because I would have the the logos on them, and it's cool to have like you know dragons badges from when they were premiers for eleven straight years and stuff like that. It was really cool. I found. Yeah. No, uh, and. A lot of the uh, the logos changed around the the sixties, seventies, and eighties. Mm, yeah, yeah. That would have been pretty cool to be able to have them just to track that. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. And like, you never know whose they were. Um, some of them were obviously brand new. Like there was a couple of them that I had you could see were had never been in in use. So um, yeah, I'll have to find them and, and take some pictures of them and stuff like that. But um, really cool little hobby. I don't know. You could probably still find them on, on eBay. Oh, they're everywhere. Yeah, so... I mean, people uh, still sell on trading cards from the 70s and 80s. Yeah, I never got into the trading card thing. Like, obviously, when I was a kid, I used to um, get the trading cards. I think the last year I did trading cards was 94, I think it was. Yeah, mine was, mine was 96, 95, yeah. 96. And that was basically the only time I ever got into it was 95 and 96. Yeah. Um, I think in 96, they did two series in one year. Yeah. And I got almost a full set of the the first series and maybe about half the second one and hung on to them until about eight months ago. Yeah. And then just realized I'll take up space and no one was interested in them, so I threw them in the bin. I would have had them. (laughs) (laughs) They're gone. They're gone. Damn it. I had to make Uh, way for some of the 15 million books that I've now got. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah i used to I'd like 
I've got some footy cards. I'm trying to think of like some of the older players that I would have on footy cards. Um, like obviously Panthers players and stuff like that. And like I had the the red ones, the old uh, Winfield Cup ones. Oh yes. So yeah, they were, they were red at the time, and then I think they had blue ones as well. I had some blue ones as well. Um, and then there there was uh, would have been I guess the 1990 Kangaroo Tour. I think it would have been where you got all of the card. If you put all the cards together, it was the Australian Test team basically on the back. Maybe it was 91. It would have been. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember they doing that on the back. Yeah, yeah. So, but and I never completed that because I, I was a kid. I was, you know, we were flicking them against the wall and trading them and stuff like that at school. Yeah. It's what us impoverished kids in Western Sydney used to do. <laughs> <laughs> How did you even afford the cards? You're so impoverished. Well, we just dealt in drugs and gang violence. <laughs> It just bashed people from the eastern suburbs and got their cards off them. We yeah, we used to go to the, we used to go to Mossman and steal Range Rovers and shit. <laughs> like fuck. Um, so yeah, that I, and I think I don't know if I've got any pictures of, of those cards on my Instagram, but I might do. I can't remember what's on my Instagram now. Lots of pictures of um like vacuum cleaners and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about you shut your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. So, uh, what are you what are your feelings on the grand final? Have they changed at all during the last few days? Not really, no. Yeah, you still think Penrith's going to do it? Yeah, pretty... was, usually after a while, you're thinking about, it, you look at it, you start overanalyzing it, and I start thinking, oh, maybe this team does have a chance here. And I haven't really gotten to the overanalyzing part yet, but mm. nothing about. Brisbane has got me thinking that they're going to um, to win the game. I think I think in order to win the grand final against Penrith, because um, you've, you've got to first understand that Penrith are going to go up to a gear that they haven't played in all year. Yeah, that automatically makes them harder to to, to play because you don't know what it is they're going to bring, but you know it's going to be extra. Um. And the only way you're going to have a chance is you need to get out in front of them early. Mm-hmm. And that's that's really hard to do for, you know, for any team. But to do it in a big stage in an important game, uh, even harder. And then to stay there because they are going to come back at you. Yeah. Um, and I, I, sorry, go on. No, I was just going to it's, it's – I, I can't see that – I, I don't know. There's something about the Broncos' attack. I think it's going to get um, frustrated with the Panthers' defense. Yeah, you know, I start I could doing say panicky that. stuff. Yeah, well, that's and that's the thing. And once you start doing that panicky stuff against Penrith, it it has to work every time because if it if it works like if it works seventy five percent of the time, that twenty five percent that it's failed. Penrith will make you pay for it. Um, you know, and we saw last year in the grand final, like the first 20 minutes in particular, the, I mean, the Eels were shot, you know, like mentally shot because they they didn't expect to come out and be absolutely blasted the way they were. And, the, I mean, the game was over after about half hour, which was yeah. a really weird uh it was a really weird feeling as a club, as as the fan of a club in a grand final like that, where half hour in you were like, well, this is, at, at worst, we're going to win the game comfortably, and at best, we might break the record for points in a grand final. So, and that's going to be really interesting because the Broncos have a really big, powerful forward pack. And to see the if the Panthers are able to do that against this Broncos pack. It's just going to be kind of crazy to watch to see it happen. Um, but at the same time, if this Broncos pack can hold their own and withstand that, it's going to be a great achievement in itself. And that's why that's the cool thing about this grand final is that, like, we're either going to see a team mark their their greatness on a you know a, the scale of history. 
or we're going to see a team that has beaten that team, which will be great in itself. And so it's, it's really like shaping up as a really incredible game to watch. Like I can't wait. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're getting into the highlights now of rounds 13 and 14 for the Dallium medal. Um, they just showed the rules up there before saying that um, instead of just getting three points, two points, one point this year, it'll be um, was it six, five and four could even be more. I think all the way down to one because mm. there's two judges judging on them. So you can get a maximum of six points per game. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the winner this year is going to have something like 70 fucking points or something. something <laughs> <nasty. laughs> it's like if they just went, right, we're going to make tries worth 10 points. <laughs> so it's like something the rugby union would do. Yeah. She's there going well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, you sent me that that article this afternoon, and I'd already seen it, mate. Because, like, you know, entertain entertainment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going great. And yeah, it turns yeah, out, going. turns out, uh, selling your entire future on doing well in a World Cup that you suck in doesn't work, hey? <laughs> it was they said apparently that they they thought they'd be able to get. Two hundred million dollars from the the World Cup appearance, and it's looking like it's they're going to need to borrow ninety million. Yeah, like they're properly fucked. That's a bit of a uh, that's a bit of a poor calculation. I saw <laughs> when I was reading the, the entertaining Reddit threads the other day about um what should happen, and I saw somebody say like, oh, they should the NRL should invest in them, and. Like, I've talked about, like, what's the possibility of something like that happening? But, you know, if you're the NRL, you just wait a bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the moment, they're, uh, rugby is doing a great job of driving their price down. Exactly. So you just let them keep going. Don't, don't, buy, don't buy early and buy high. Hold off until it's come down. Yeah, and, I, like, I, the problem is I just don't know where you get the upside if you're rugby league. Um I, I don't know where it is. I, like, because I was seeing people saying, and then the the players could play club rugby league during the season, and then in the off season they could all play international rugby union. It's like that's a the f- fucking dumbest idea I've ever heard. Yeah, like, that's atrocious. Yeah. No, the reason why the NRL by AIA would buy rugby union was so that rugby union didn't exist here anymore. Pretty much, hey. Just yeah. take all their IP and everything and just use it yourself. Yeah. But um, put Cadbury on things. <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> and that's about it. Is there anything else they've got? Yeah, that's, that's about it. Put um, all of their – give every single rugby union team a New South Wales Cup side. So you can have Gordon playing a New South Wales Cup. What if you bought rugby union in Australia and you just took over the name of rugby in Australia? Because yeah, technically it would be right. Yeah. Oh, Edwards gets three points climbing up the list. Ben Hunt equal first with Sean Johnson on 32. There's your mate, Drew Quarter. Never heard of him. Yeah. What do you call him, <laughs> sorry? Daylight. Matt Daylight. Daylight. There Matt he is. Daylight. Oh, Reese Walsh moving into the top three. Was oh, this round 17? Yep. We've just flown through five rounds. I oh, know. I think, yeah. Mitch Moses. Yeah, Bob Cleary. He, he doesn't. Mitch Moses. What was it he had? Was it a busted arm or leg? Oh, ooh, he's here's your boy Dylan Edwards rising to the top. He ain't fucking around. He got up there pretty quick. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The no. thing was, like, he didn't play Origin. No, that's right. And he didn't have too many games off with injury. I think he had a couple of games he missed through injury. So, you know, it, it just seemed right that that was going to be how it turned out. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. This is the crazy thing because you can get six points. Every mm-hmm. single person on that list has an opportunity to go straight to first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After round 18, Dylan Edwards, 35. Nico Hines and Scott Drinkwater, 33, with Sean Johnson. Ben Hunt, Cody Walker, 32. Payne Haas, Reese Walsh, 31. Harry Grant, Isa Yeo, 29. I think that Harry Grant had a poor season, hey? 
He did. He did. Um, I think, too, Cody Walker was a bit quiet at the tail end of the season. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and the Sharks are a bit inconsistent towards the end of the year, so I think Hines, I expect him to sort of drop down a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, that he played, uh, not that he played poorly, but you know the the Sharks weren't exactly going great guns at the end of the season. No, they weren't. It was an interesting year for teams that just didn't quite hit the mark. Hey, like, like you could say it about Parramatta. Um, you could say it about the Sharks. I think that you could say it about some of the Storm players. Not all of them. Uh, there were some very good players in the Storm side, but just uh certain teams just didn't quite do what you expected them to do this year i think it's fair to say like i, I thought that souths would be outstanding this year oh, and they so were not so they were i thought they'd be genuinely threatening penrith this year yeah yeah and i think at the start of the year i predicted latrell mitchell to get the daily m oh, and really? uh yeah that's going well yeah <laughs> <laughs> now probably- finally my only question is going to be, will any West Tigers players mm. get to 10 points? Uh, well, they shouldn't. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> like a bunch of them will get a heap of points for that one game against the Cowboys where they won. Mm. And uh, I think there's two or three other games where they might get a, a few of them might get a few points. So I can't see any reason why they get any elsewhere. Yeah, it's a rough season. Rough season. Yeah. Well, so you look at Ben Hunt, like I'm surprised he is so high up the the Dalian leaderboard because, um, what's this NRLW Captain of the Year? Yeah, Samaima Tafa, Captain of the Year in the women's. Huh. Yeah, they've made her walk away to get her award, aren't they? Yeah, God, that's a that's a long hike. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, like, what do you think about the thing with the Dallium Awards where if you get suspended for a certain number of weeks, you're out? Um, well, I think it was initially designed to take over from, was it the Rothmans? Rothmans, One yeah. The, the Rothmans was best and fairest. Yeah. And I think that's where that rule came from. Mm-hmm. Um. Was it the Ruffins? I can't remember. Yeah, it was. It was. Because we used to have... There was another one as well. We had two going at the same time. Yeah. You had the Rothmans medal. You had the Dally M medal. Yeah, I think the Rothmans might have become the... Um, oh, I can't remember now. Mm. There's another one we've got on there. But yeah, it's, uh, there's a Best of Ferris one. I think they try and incorporate in there. They, it used to be from memory in the nineties, if you ever, if you got sent off, mm. even if you didn't get suspended, you would be disqualified. And then they yep. changed it so that um you could get sent off, but if you didn't get suspended, you'd still qualify. But if you got suspended for a week or more, then you were automatically banned. Yeah. And then they changed it a few years ago to you lost a point for every week you were suspended mm-hmm. or something like that. I'm not too sure what the system is now. Does, is it just you're completely unable to get it because you've been suspended? or? I thought I heard somebody saying that if you got suspended and you got a certain amount of points, then you weren't eligible anymore because from memory they were upset that it was possible that Reese Walsh wouldn't be um, up for the award, wouldn't be able to get it. Um, I don't mind it being the best and fairest at all. Like, it's a bit of a strange award anyway, so why not just, like, you know, why not go all the way with the strangest, make it if you get suspended, you're out? Yeah. I'm I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. Why not? You know, you you don't want to be going around giving, you know, player of the year awards to someone who might have gone around and twice during the year just absolutely took someone's fucking head off because (laughs) fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Captain of the year. Well, come on. Yo's got to get this for sure. It's got to be Isaiah, yeah, you'd think. And it's not. And it's not. It's Reynolds. It's Adam Reynolds. That's fair enough. I can't argue with that. Yeah. The man who captained the second best side of the year. <laughs> That's a bit rough. 
He's leading a am, young team, Andrew. Am, am I wrong? You're not wrong. So okay. there you go. So that probably would have. I probably would have said um, Sean Johnson should have got this. To be honest, I think he was the captain of the Warriors. Was he? Was it Toe Harris? Toe Harris. Harris. I think it was Harris. Yeah. But then yeah. again, that that just turns it more into a most improved award, doesn't it? What do you mean? Wait. Well, if you if you start giving it to the team that's surprised everyone by doing better than everybody else compared yeah. to expectations, you're just giving yeah. out, you know, most improved awards then. So who okay, that's it. that leads me to this next question. So who would you give the coach of the year award to? Because if you I think Kevin Walters has done a fantastic job. Obviously Ivan Cleary's done a fantastic job. But Everyone's saying that the Warriors coach should get out. I can't remember his name at the moment. Andrew, Andrew Webster. Andrew Webster, that's it. Um, I, I've got no problems with Andrew Webster getting it because I think that the turnaround from that Warriors team in his first year there is absolutely crazy. And, and that's that's some coaching, you know. And I understand Ivan Cleary, you know, he's where he's got Penrith, they're, they're just unbelievable. Yeah. But I don't lose any sleep over Ivan Cleary not getting the Coach of the Year award. Yeah, no, I'd, I think I'd probably, um, I'd probably lean towards Kevin Walters to be honest. Yeah. Um, because it's not often you get a a coach turns up to a club at their lowest point, and he rebuilds them, having never coached at this level before. Mm. And he rebuilds them from the worst team to the comp in the space of, what, two, three seasons? Yeah, yeah. To being into a grand final. I don't know that that's, that's been done before. To go from one extreme to the other in basically just a few years. And it's not a hugely different squad. No. He's kept a strong core of the players that he started with. He's kept them there and he's made them better. Or every single one of them. Um, that's Vastly impressive. Um, I think it's too early to tell on Andrew Webster. Mm-hmm. Like Kevin Walters has got a bit of a form line of constantly improving year on year end. Um, Webster's only just started on that trajectory. Yeah. We need to see what happens next year. Remember last year when we were talking about the Broncos and we were saying, like, you can see that they're, they're doing things in attack which they need to do, but that the defence, they go from being all right to falling back to their old habits. And, I mean, this year they were one of the best defensive teams in the competition. It's the turnaround from where they were, the lowest of lows, like an historically bad team to this is incredible. And, like, Walters has done it in the face of basically everyone questioning if he could do it. Like, even you and me were like, I don't know about this, you know. Um, And he's done it. And I'm so happy for him. I'm just so happy for him. Like, I was watching that when they they won that game to get into the grand final and they showed Walters in the coaching box. And it's just like, what a great moment for him. And he just deserves all the accolades. Absolutely. You know, because, I mean, look, if they had a, 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 say they missed the finals next year, I bet the media would be on Walters hard. Oh, they'd so, be doing everything to get him sacked. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and I'm not saying that that's about to happen or anything, but I, I just think that the the media is really hanging for him to fail. So to see him doing the opposite has been awesome. Absolutely. Anytime anyone is shitting on the media through nothing more than performance, absolutely. I'm all for that. Um, yeah, there was a bit of there was a bit of news that came out today mm. that uh, the New South Wales Rugby League would really like the Brad Fittler to have an NRL coach as his an assistant coach because Brad Fittler's such a good coach that he needs a current NRL coach to help him coach and of course that sounds convoluted and stupid because it is you know there is an element of something I agree with there and that uh-huh. is. Um, the current assistant coaching system he's got are completely incapable of getting the job done. Well, so that much I agree with. 
Well, they announced a couple of days ago that uh, it was Greg Alexander and I think it was Mary McGregor from memory. His assistant coaches would not be back yep. for next year. And I was talking more about the ones whose surnames are Johns. Yeah, oh, yeah, 100%. They need to be nowhere near it. They spent more time bitching at one another than they did actually coaching anything sensible. It's kind of weird, hey? Yeah. I like that the Johns brothers can't stand the Johns brothers either, though. Yeah, that's something we can agree on with. <laughs> agree on them with. They finally got <laughs> something right. <laughs> Did you see the news that the owner of the Lee Leopards is threatening to withdraw his team from Super League and start a rebel competition? <laughs> Serious? Yes. Yes. Oh my fucking god. Yeah. Um. You know what? Go for it, son. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who the fuck's going to do what? First of all, why? He was upset with some, like, I think a refereeing decision or something. Oh, so I'm just, well, he just thinks that all of a sudden the, the Lee Leopards are the Brisbane Broncos. Yeah. Like, yeah. If, if Lee weren't part of Super League, would anyone notice? No. <laughs> No. Um, geez. I, I'm going to do a Google search on something here. Okay, okay. Just bear with me if I go quiet. The, the uh, Oh, look, I can see your screen. Yeah. I wish it had opened up to your special folders. <laughs> that, that's for later when the recording stops. Okay, okay. Well, you know, you could record it if you wanted to. But, um, so I want to find out what the population of Lee is. I think it's 15,000 people. I think we've looked this up before. Well, she was that small. Yeah, yeah, because we, we've, we've, we didn't joke about it, but we laughed at it. 40, 45,000. Okay. So yeah. last time we looked it up, maybe the, the population's grown. Possible. You know, those uh, yoga pants that the players are wearing might have turned a few people on. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, it, it was a bit of a like that's not how you run a stable club. Absolutely not. Um, Forty-five thousand people. Okay. Um, let's see. Ipswich has two hundred twenty-two thousand people. Okay. We need something smaller than that. Nah. Well, yeah, where would be somewhere smaller? The scenic rim region of Brisbane. So that's mm-hmm. the West Morton area. What's a major city there? Um, Bow Desert. There we go. Bow Desert. We're going outside of Brisbane a bit there. Mm-hmm. That's got 42,000. Okay. Imagine if we had Bo Desert in the NRL. Well, imagine if we said if Bo Desert came along, even not in the NRL, just said, fuck the NRL, we're starting our own super competition, come join us. And everyone's gone, where the fuck's Bo Desert? <laughs> be like, in the, oh, what? Uh, it'd, be, it'd be like uh, in Jerry Maguire, you know, where he, he he's leaving and he, he, he goes out into the office and he says, I'm going to start something new. Who's coming with me? All right, who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? And it's only one secretary goes with him. <laughs> it's kind of that. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, well, I guess if if Lee decides to, I mean, obviously they won't because they're gutless. It's all just wank and talk that they're doing. Um, but if they decide to, to leave, does that mean that Wakefield stays in the Super League and they don't get relegated? <laughs> it could do. But what if, like, they team up with Wakey? I oh, know. Wakeford should absolutely gaslight them and just say, you know what? We'll join you. Just to make them start it up. And they go, yeah, you know, we're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> bye bye, Lee. We're in the Super League. <laughs> what would a, a Lee breakaway competition look like? Like, they'd have, like, Lee um, Sheffield. I was going to say, I think Lee. <laughs> what if they did it and it was awesome? What if it was Lee 
London, Paris, Dublin, Edinburgh. They bring in Toronto. I, I don't know that Lee would know about those places. Probably not. Well, the, the reason Lee are there is because they go to Toronto, really, isn't it? Uh, yes, basically. I think that's the best way to put it. Um, I don't know. What's around Lee? They could have... you got Bolton. Wellington, you got St. Helens. you got Wigan. Well, they've got Bolton. Bolton, yeah, Bolton. Look, I don't think they're going to get current teams in this. They're going to get some teams that are not currently in the Super League. So, you know, they'll get Bolton, um, maybe West Houghton. <laughs> what about, what was the team um, that was going to be called the Manchester Lions and they... they Eccles? Fan- hey? <laughs> Eccles? Oh, was that um, Swinton? Swinton, that was it, Swinton Lions. Yeah, yeah and if they, they started getting death threats. <laughs> so yeah. ridiculous. Outridge Um how about Prescott? Prescott would be good. That's not far away. Ormsburg. I've been, I've been to Eccles. They deserve to be in the league competition. <laughs> um what's we got here? Rams bottom? Yeah. They could they can go across. <laughs> So they're going to do – this is the coach NRL Coach of the Year coming up this award. So I'm glad we talked about that earlier on. Yeah. I thought Kev. this award would have been later in the night. How come Kevin's got no eyebrows? That's a really good question. I don't know. It's like his eyelids swallowed them. <laughs> he just doesn't need them anymore. Well, that's true. He's just constantly frowning now. So the winner is – drum roll – well, it is the three coaches, though. It's, oh, it's Andrew Webster. Webster. Good on him. Yeah. No one knew who that was until they put his name up on the screen. Oh, Former, that's right. He's that guy. <laughs> Former Penrith Panthers assistant coach. Coached over in England. Do you know that, Andrew? Hey? Yeah. Coached the West Tigers. <laughs> well, well done, Chairman Lee and Captain Spud. Just let a coach of the year go. They've never done that before, though, have they? No, nah, I mean they've also let another guy that was in there in that nomination list. They let him go as well. Yeah, but he never amounted to much, did he? No, he only became a premiership winning coach. Um, there was another guy there that wore a crazy suit we mentioned before, who I think actually had shown interest in being a, a coach at the West Tigers before he went to the Storm. Yep. 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 They let him go. Fuck that guy. He's not going to be any good. So, um, the ability of the club to spot talent, second to n- nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing. Um, Andrew Webster. Look at him. He's, he's got the crowd in his hand, man. Andrew Abdo's at the back going, oh, fucking asshole. No one would speak. No one was laughing at me like that. <laughs> He's out there going, but the paint isn't even drying. <laughs> the grass is not growing. Uh, this is classic. There we go. Yeah, uh, well, that's, that's good. That's yeah, good that, that's stuff. cool. We're happy with that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's good to see the New Zealand Warriors get something out of this season because they did have a very good year, very good turnaround. It, I know it ended pretty poorly for them, but, uh, you know, it's good that they can say, well, we've got the NRL coach of the year and that's something to build around. Absolutely. Just the thing is, when he says, I want a long-term contract extension, just give it to him, please. Yeah. What he should do is when he goes in for that contract extension, just walk in with that trophy. Yeah. Just plonk it down on the table. And just say, I was seeking four years. <laughs> I've brought a pen. I think we almost saw Ivan Cleary smile there. No, well, he was just Cleary, breathing. Ivan Cleary is a good example of like what we've talked about being NRL coaches. Like they just don't seem like the sort of people that are the life of the party. No. But he, he's actually sitting there going, look, looking like he'd rather be at home eating pizza or watching something on the couch. 
Oh, Webster's is lost. Where am I going? He's got lost. <laughs> Dude, he got lost. Big got open Webster's space. Gone. I don't know where to go. <laughs> there we go. They've whisked him at the back, and now he's going to go and have a word with Andrew Abdo. You won't see him Warriors fans next year. He's going to be learning stats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Rookie of the year. Petro. Yeah. Well, I don't think he qualifies anymore. No, nah, no, nah, he's a bit old for rookie of the year. Uh, one thing I'll say about Petro Seven to see, but every time I see him, his head gets bigger. It does, but I'll tell you what, he still looks like um he'd be the best forward at West Tigers if he turned up next year. Yeah, true. He, I, he, well, I think he would be. Comfortably. Uh, God, who do you have built? <laughs> who, do you, who do you have as the rookie of the year? I think uh, Buller will win it, but. I, I think Taruva is pretty hard to go by, to be honest. Um, oh, this was the they're showing NRLW. Maybe it's the NRLW Rookie of the Year. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Um, but for the NRL one, I think uh, yeah, Taruva. I don't know. I reckon that. Uh, I reckon Buller might be might get nominated. I yeah. don't think you'll. I don't think you'll get it, but I'm, I think you might get nominated. He seemed to be the only. Genuine player of interest at the West Tigers. Like, if people were going to watch a West Tigers game this year, it was to watch him to do see if he'd do something. Um, what about that half hour that Dane Laurie put in? <clears throat> which half hour? So there's a pretty good half hour there during the season where he looked like he cared for it. Like he he remember he signed to go back to Penrith and he come out and he played for half an hour and like he was excited about footy again. <laughs> And then he looked down and went, oh, fuck, I've still got this fucking jumper on. <laughs> still got this fucking jersey on. Do you reckon if the West Tigers <laughs> win the premiership, he'll drive to Campbelltown in a West Tigers jersey? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'd love it if he did. <laughs> it would be pretty funny. Imagine actually. that they, they actually beat Penrith in the grand final. Yeah. And he's sitting there going, I'm torn, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anessa Biddle has won the NRLW Rookie of the Year. Shucks. Uh, player there, so congratulations. Do you think that they should look to break up the NRL and NRLW seasons so that the NRLW gets its standalone time? Um, down the line, definitely. Yeah, I think at this stage the NRLW is still it's still building its its base. Um, it's still building its playing numbers and stuff like that. And we're seeing that the the quality of the players and the quality of the, the teams is increasing pretty solidly year on year. Mm. Um, so when you start to see it, not plateau, but sort of you, you see that, that constant growth start to level out a little bit, um, that's when you can start looking at taking it to be on its own. It might be the sort of push that it needs to sort of... Uh, Prove that it can do it on its own two feet, but still with the it would still be at arm's length with the NRL, so it would, you yeah. don't want it to ever go under. I just and I don't think I, it would. I wonder how the NRLW season would be. Oh, is this? Oh, they're showing the nominations for the rookie of the year in the NRL. Yeah. I just wonder if the NRLW season's grand final was, say, I don't know, say it was the last weekend in August. And it was played at, say, Parramatta Stadium. I, I wonder if that would be a better showcase for the women's game so that we have that build up. We've got this big event and then we go into the NRL, uh, you know, finals. Because I feel as though the NRLW and their final series kind of get swamped by the NRL final series. It does. And they've, they have tried little things here and there to try and shake it up a little bit. But, yeah, this is a little bit swallowed up by it all. There's no doubt about it. Mm. Um, and it's all because, obviously, the NRL wants to try and have all the grand finals on the one day, which I get. Mm. Um, so I don't really know how you get around that other than, I don't know, maybe having the, the NRL W finals on Thursdays and Fridays. Yeah. And the NRL finals on Saturdays, Sundays. I don't know. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, that would be actually really cool, hey? Yeah, because then you, you'd still get your four days' worth of footy in. 
And there it is, Taruva, Rookie of the Year. You called it and you nailed it. I think that's a good call. I think that he, you know, he I, he probably wasn't being marked as a full-time first grader at the start of the year. And he got put into that role because of injury. And he's been fantastic. Every team kicked to him a million times this year. And he was really good under the high ball. Um, handled the pressure well. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that Toto's on the other side of the field, like running for a million miles every game, Taruva ran for a lot of metres himself as a as a winger. So I'm glad that I'm glad that he he got that award. I, I think that he really deserved it. And I understand Buller played very well in a not a great team, but I think it's easier to stand out a little bit in a in a not a great team. Whereas I think oh, that I think that Taruva had a chance to to look like a weak link in the Panthers, and he was anything but. He was really strong for them all year. Yeah. Um, I look full credit to him too because he uh, also came out in um, those Panthers colours, his suit. Yeah. And he's gone by the uh, the teal and the black. <laughs> that, that took balls to wear that atrocious fucking colour combination, but he made it look good. Um, so I'd, I'd even give him the rookie the award just for actually not wearing a black suit like everybody else. <laughs> Free thinker, ballsy. That's the sort of confidence and arrogance I want to see in my wingers. If you were to go to the Dally M's, would you wear a bow tie or would you wear a normal tie? Normal tie. If I saw everyone else wearing a bow tie, I'm not wearing that. Yeah, I, I think I'd wear a normal tie as well. I'll wear a normal tie. Would you go the black suit? No. Nah. What would you go? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a fan of, of wearing just plain black black and white that just looks stupid feels like you're working in a hospital like you know what after i've done talking with someone picked up some water i've got to go do some dishes now yeah yeah i don't, I don't like that shit i, I would uh, say i I'll... probably have a black jacket but i would i certainly would not have a white shirt on or a black shirt i think i would wear uh white leather shoes no matter what i wore because i like wearing white leather shoes hey Dolphin leather or cow leather? It doesn't bother me either one. No, I was just wondering what sort of leather your shoes are, or have you just got one of each? It's a really good question. I, I wonder what type of leather they're made out of now. <laughs> as which long as pre- it's which not... would you prefer? Would you prefer that a dolphin died for your footwear or that a cow did? If I had if I had white leather shoes that were made out of dolphin, I would be telling everyone, "Hey, Luke, <laughs> you like my shoes? Guess what they're made out of? Guess." <laughs> I wonder if you can take dolphin hide and turn it into decent leather. Who knows? Well, I, really wanna know. Do. <laughs> I really want to know. I really want to know. Oh, that went bad. That was an old whaling joke from the 90s for you. Showing my age now. Remember when we used to whale? Yeah. Those, God, were, the those were the days. Yeah. Who's this bloke? Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> so Scotty Sattler, is, yeah. uh, he's making a speech. We don't know what it's about because we've got no sound, which is because we're entertaining you lot. That's right. Um, I bet he's talking about his time at the Tigers. Yeah, probably. Reminiscing. I was at the game. Tigers when they used to win football games. Not all the time, but far more frequently than they currently do. I there was like, yeah, still, right, whatever. I wonder if he's still working with the uh, Gold Coast Titans. I didn't think he was anymore. Oh, so he's talking about his dad. I think this would be the, the section where they talk about the... the uh, Players who passed away, like past players and stuff like that, who, yeah, who passed away yeah. during the year. Um, I kind of figured out as soon as I saw him there. Tommy See, Ryan, like, Keith Outen. Outen played for Balmain in the 60s. Yeah. Bob Cooper. He can play for the Magpies. Tough, tough, tough player. Jim Cody. Jack Lumsden. Ken Wilson. A lot of blokes from the 60s and 70s here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's oh. weird. It's weird that uh, that era of of players that were running around back then, we're starting to lose them all, hey? Yeah, well, that's the thing. They're they're all around about their eighties now. Yeah, Dennis it's like a golden era. Roy Ferguson, great winger. What else we got here? Cole White. Oh, yeah. Played for the Magpies in the 90s. I don't remember what happened to him. Yeah, he passed. That was a bit of a uh, shock, that one, because he wasn't all that old. Yeah. Uh, Lionel Morgan obviously recently passed away. Uh, John McDonald. Cole Turner, that one was a bit tragic. Yeah. Good work there with the uh, TV. John, Brian Walsh. So I obviously I remember all of these throughout the year, but when you're asked to think about it and put them all together, you kind of forget. <laughs> That's the sad part about these sort of things is you just you do have to keep moving forward. But uh, there's some pretty iconic names in there. Yeah, yeah. And it's good that they actually remember Tina Turner there because, uh, God damn, she was instrumental in getting this game moving again in the 90s. Yeah, she was the, the right person at the right time in the right moment. Still a best song. Like, just brilliant. Yeah. Makes you wonder why they ever like went away from it. Like, why didn't you just stick with it? There's nothing wrong with sticking with the song for a while, but they feel like they've got to have a different one every year. I wonder if they just don't have the rights to it anymore. They probably don't. I think, I reckon that's. I wonder if that's the reason why they got Jimmy Barnes to do the duet with a one year. Because so, there was a different recording version of it, and they might be able to get rights of it. Like, I know that the grand final entertainment is going to be, there's a Tina Turner musical in Sydney. Yes. And they're going to have, and I, well, as soon as I heard that, I was like, that's brilliant. And I remember, because I saw on the news the the Tina Turner musical, I remember thinking to myself, man, it, you, like if you're playing Tina Turner in that musical, you better be able to sing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so yeah. I think it's going to be awesome. I think people are going to love it. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, sh- it should be pretty good too. Um, mm. Hell of a story too that she had. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, just, when they did that marketing campaign, it was just like, it was fantastic. And I, I kind of understand why they wanted to try other ones. But the fact that like all these years later, that's the one that people still go to. Um, it says a lot. Yeah. Just watching an ad there for Telstra. Is that some of the impoverished youth in Penrith? Well, it looked it's, like he, he owned a car. Well, we, we don't, don't know that he owned cars. it. We borrowed them, apparently. We don't know if he did own it. He had a car. We don't know how it was obtained, just like we don't know how the iPad was was obtained. It's probably true. in the car when they took it. I always like when you see the adverts and it says, Telstra, supporting rugby league for 20 years. And it's like, yeah, we remember how you got into rugby league, Telstra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um <laughs> For those they don't, that don't, they know, don't go into too much detail there, do they? For those that don't know, it was called the Super League War. They That's were right. funding Super League. It's kind of like our fear today talks about their origins too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was another one? Was it Volkswagen? Yeah, Volkswagen. Yeah. We've it's been a... around for a while. We're family business. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? What family? Don't worry about that, okay? Let's just move forward. We're working on the future. Oh, dear. Cash drive has been that for cash drive for years. No, I think I think it's because maybe they come back into the... Oh, no, that's Ampol. Well, whoever the fuck it is, they're all paying... We're all paying too much for petrol anyway. Yeah, fuck those guys. Pricks. So, um... The NRLW Grand Final, it's between the Titans and the Knights, which I think is really cool because 
It's just different names, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm going Knights. I think the Knights have won a ton of ton of games in recent times. Yeah, I think I'd probably I'd probably go the Knights. Um I guess I guess we'll find out. You never know about grand finals. Hey, like you know, it's just one of those games where because you know, sometimes players lift, sometimes teams fade under the spotlight. That's what makes them so good. And sometimes the, you know, just the, even if you've been to a grand final before but lost, that experience is enough to get you over the, the hurdle the next time around. Yeah. Um, sometimes having a team that's got a lot of youngsters in it can see them either thrive or choke mm-hmm. um, because they are very much obviously um, confidence players. So there's so many variables in there. That's a weird thing too. This was felt for ages now that this Panther side is a young team. Mm. The Brisbane team that's playing them in the grand final have an average age that is one year younger than them. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, that's a whack. And yet the difference in like <clears throat> finals experience is gigantic. Between oh yeah, massive. And like, and you never know. Like I remember in two thousand and three, that was a pretty young Panthers side back then, and they just handled it. It, it wasn't a problem for them. That's but, right. But you would normally think that a young side would wilt under the pressure a little bit. And and there used to be the thing of like you had to lose grand final to win one. I, I think that that's out the window these days, um, just because the NRL is so high intensity week in week out and. I think the final series being a bit longer as well helps players acclimatise to the grand final. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's a strange dynamic between these two teams. Like, they're both still pretty young, and yet there's this big golfing experience somehow. And it's, like we've talked about before, normally a team that has the experience that the Panthers have, they're all 30-year-olds. And most of these guys aren't going to be 30 for like three or four more years at the very least. So it's just, it's a, it's a weird grand final. That's why it's so cool because there's all of these variables that you normally can rely on and, and look to and stuff. A lot of them aren't there. And, and so it just makes it such an open ended like result that we're going to get. Yeah, absolutely. And they still play the game, um, like a, just remarkably good mindset. The way they play the game, they're, they're trying to play the game the most rugby league way possible, and that is just open footy. Yeah, yeah, I uh, just love that. Uh, so it looks like what have we got? We've got another interview on stage. I'm looking at. I don't know this has been something that I've been looking at all night. The two microphones look like they are just duct taped together. Oh, really? Yeah, like very dodgily. They're not even done so that they balance properly. They're a bit off kilter. And um, I don't know. It's just the OCD of me. It just spots stupid shit like that. And I just yeah. go, why can't they just do that properly? Do you still use the, the blue snowball for your microphone? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why, why'd you ask that? <laughs> I just wondered. Cause it's, <laughs> I remember when, when I, I think you had yours first, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And then I went and got the same one. Yeah. And I can't remember what happened to mine. Do you remember what happened to my one? Um, Did it die on me or something? Possibly, or someone stole it. I mean, I you are in an impoverished area. That's true. It's yeah. the youth. It's the youth. <laughs> but the uh and I ended up getting a more expensive one. Now I've got a road. But mm. um yeah, I think maybe that one died and I went and took it back and I got the road. I think that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the cable on yours shit itself. Yes. And it's not a high quality cable. Like the cable on this one, it's the same cable that I use on an old printer. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. So, you know, you know you've got quality there. Yeah. I um yeah, it was like, and it's cool because my wife, I used to move my microphone around a lot, and I think that that the cable didn't like it too much. So, 
I decided to upgrade now. I've got like a, the boom arm and everything, which is makes it all feel official. Oh, well, I mean, you had to, given you you got that extension put on, that extra wing of the house put on there to have the recording studio. Yeah, yeah. So it made sense you you went all the way with the uh, the arm on your microphone. Paid for it with a life of crime when I was in my youth. Look, so you obviously knew what you were doing back then. <laughs> <laughs> it was all part of your five year plan. So we're watching NRLW highlights. They need to condense this Dally M shit. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it's like we're watching this these highlights for no reason. I know I'm I'm not opposed to watching highlights, so I'm fine with that. And oddly enough, not much slow motion going on. But it's like okay, we're gonna have people ah, talk. There's a slow mo. There we go. <laughs> We're going to have people talking for about three or four minutes about what we're going to see, and then we show them it, and then we show you the points. And it's like there's got to be a better way to do that. Yeah, it's weird. Um, I was thinking today about the Dallium Award, Mm -hmm. and it's what it is now is not what it was when it first started, obviously. Because when Mm -hmm. it first started, it was they did every round. Mm Mm-hmm. But they didn't show too much of the highlights. It was just like, okay, these are the this is the the game that took place, and mm. this is who got the points. Mm. And it was a slow process. But what it was was a almost a direct copy of how the AFL does their Brownlow Awards. Mm-hmm. Thing is, AFL's been doing that Brownlow Award in that manner for a long, long time. So it's kind of something that the fans know, and it's an event that they they love to watch. And it goes on for hours, but mm. that's part of what their game is. It's part of their game's culture is that that part of the awards night. The NRL one, the Delhi M Awards, has changed around so many times. It doesn't have a set structure that everyone's used to. It keeps changing around and moving around a bit, and they keep condensing it. They make it longer and condense it, and uh, fucking around everywhere. So it's... um. It's a weird thing, and it feels like in more recent times they're trying to do a condensed version of the AFL version of the Brownlow. Mm. Now, I'm not opposed in rugby league copying things from AFL that works. Hey, two of the greatest things that have happened to rugby league in the modern game have come from AFL, and that's state of origin and salary cap. Mm -hmm. But maybe with award night, Let's just do things our own way and, uh, yeah, make this a bit quicker. <clears throat> Maybe get, I think the first thing you mentioned there was just do away with the interviews all the time. Like, let's just get into the points and stuff like that. That's what people are here for. Yeah, yeah. And I would do the points from around 20 onwards. I think it'd be fine from the point they're doing it if that's all it was. Right. Yeah. Bam, here's the points. Bang, 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 bang. You'd be fine because you'd be, you'd be nearly – you are nearly halfway through by now. Because, I, I mean, like, I don't feel – when they're doing the, the points from, like, round 17, I'm not like, ooh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's kind of like that's maybe the last round or two you get something like that out of it. Uh, I, I just – I don't know. I mean, it's got to be a reason they do it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like the the long the long broadcast, of a, it makes sense if they've got a whole lot of advertisers on, but they kind of don't. No. So I'm not too sure what's going on here. Maybe, maybe they can only rent out the venue for four hours. and go, well, we better make up our time here, get our money's worth out of this joint. I mean, everyone there looks bored. And granted, we haven't seen Valentine Holmes' table. But... No, that's true. But everyone there looks fucking bored. <laughs> yes. And what we're seeing here is they're doing the men's and the women's ones at the same time. So we do an update on the men's ones, then we go back to the women's ones, and we go backwards and forwards, which is also an atrocious way of doing this. Yeah, yeah. So if the if the NRLW had their own awards night, I think that would be amazing. It would be. Like it'd be great, and I really do. I think that it just gets swamped by the NRL and it's understandable. And I, I think that it's better than that. I think it's more valuable than that. Yes. 
He's an ideas man. Yeah, Wayne Pierce. Remember when he saved rugby league during COVID? Do you remember that? I do, I do. Do you the reckon he was, could, the game do was dead? Could save, do you reckon he could save the tape on that microphone thing? That's look at it. I mean, it's. I think it looks fine, Andrew. It's atrocious. I think it looks. Look at them. They're not even the same height. They're different angles. Yeah, that's Dog's true. Breakfast. What do you need to have to stand that high? Why don't you just have them down low and straight, and then they wouldn't stick out so much? You know, the power move is the first thing you do is you grab the mic and move it where you want it. Exactly right. Alpha love, move, that is. I love it when people do that. See, they should do that knowing that it's going to break the tape. I bet they've all been told, don't touch the microphone. It is very <laughs> delicately placed. <laughs> we put a whole two reels of tape on that thing to keep it in place, and we're still not confident it's going to work. Who do you think, because they're looking at expanding the NRLW, who do you think, say they brought in two teams, who should they be? Well, I dare say they're going to copy the NRL, aren't they? Well, yeah. Well, who do you think they'll be then? Penrith. Yeah. Um, Melbourne. I was thinking the exact same thing, eh? Hey? If Penrith. they're going to be serious about this, then they need to get, get into Melbourne ASAP. Do you reckon that... Um, the only thing that would get me about Melbourne is that the NRLW players don't earn enough money to make that a move. But I, I guess you could probably fly down for, you know, the games. But still, Maybe. And that's not really a way to do it. Maybe the game NRL could say to the Melbourne Storm, you know what, you've been around for 25 years. How's about you start putting in a bit of effort, getting some local juniors, Mm -hmm. Male and female to top level quality. I agree. I th I think that it it's at a point now where it's like now you're just being freeloaders like the roosters. Yeah, I look. Part of it is because of the NRLs and that. I mean, we mentioned it a million times that bloody penalty they handed down to the Storm when they broke the salary cap. Mm -hmm. Um, it stunted all of that work that they'd done already at that stage. But maybe the NRL could say, you know what? We'll, we'll chip in and help out, get it set up, but we need you guys to be getting more involved in development of football and stuff hmm. at that grassroots level in Melbourne. Because, yeah, 25 years and only a handful of players have come through the grades. Um, that's just not good enough. No, no. Especially when you've got no other rugby league competition. Obviously, they've got big competition from other sports, typically the AFL. But I'd have expected more than just four or five players in 25 years. Yeah, and it, look, the Storm should be getting plays from even southern New South Wales. Absolutely. You know, and that we're not seeing that. That's why I think that the, salary, the NRL club grants should be directly linked beyond the salary cap, that grant. It should be directly linked to what you're doing with your juniors. Because some club, you can't just you can't have some clubs that aren't doing anything. It's just not right. No, that's right. Um, so yeah, they should be doing a lot more around that up into the the Riverina area. I know Canberra goes there a bit, mm -hmm. but maybe Melbourne could have a. They should be allowed to share that area. Do something there to try and help the rugby league in the country area there of New South Wales and all of Victoria, not just Melbourne. But yeah. they, yeah, they've got to do something because it's you. You can't be just getting carried the whole time. We can't be. We can't be doing that with our new teams that come into the comp. I tell you what, I I could see the uh, NRLW bringing in two teams from New Zealand. I think that would be fantastic. Like they've definitely got the talent for it over there, and um, you know, ever since the COVID lockdowns and stuff. Women's Rugby League in New Zealand is, you know, it hasn't been given the attention that it used to have. I mean, they used to be easily the best in the world. Yeah. And they've kind of been left behind. And I think that it's up to the to the NRL to really, you know, make a massive change there. So if they brought, if the next two teams were two New Zealand-based teams, I'd, I'd be all for that. But I think that Penrith definitely needs to be involved. I, I'm kind of disgusted that they're not involved already. I mean... If you're the biggest club in the world, fucking prove it. Exactly, exactly. Um, 
what do you think Wayne Pierce is thinking about there? Because his eyes look kind of dead. <laughs> he's thinking about thinking about eighty nine. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Benny about, lost his field goal. Thinking about Benny. Uh, there's the right there when he starts looking down. That that's when he realizes. Yeah, I still remember that field goal attempt hitting the crossbar. He's thinking about penalties that are against the. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that Bill Harrigan said? It was the spirit of the game. Spirit of the game. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. He is still in that zone. It's like it's like in semi pro where they do the first ever alley oop in a game, <laughs> and the referee everything stops, and the referee blows his whistle, and he goes foul no two <laughs> fouls and they're like that's not a foul and he's like we can't just go flying around in the air like that <laughs> yeah, he is in a zone yeah i wonder if he's been around to uh don't, Holmes' place. don't <laughs> <laughs> no he'd be talking about oh he yeah. just blinked it, it, it'll be a potential business opportunity if that was the case <laughs> Dude, I've got an idea for a business. Seriously, it's a great idea. Fucking racehorses. Fucking racehorses worth heaps. We just get racehorses, man. With referees on the back. Oh, thanks for that, Junior. Um, you carried that, epi- that part of the episode along really well. Did you know that uh, under Ashley Klein, over the last three years, the Penrith winning percentage is ridiculous? I just no. thought I'd bring that up randomly. No. Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, it's better that's, than any other team in the game. That's that's crazy. Yeah. Well, there's only one reason for that. Well, obviously, it's Ashley Klein or the NRL. Yeah. Because Penrith aren't good enough to win games on their own. No. So. Um, sorry. I've got worrying about the tape on the microphone. It's just Wayne Pierce. <laughs> You're just worrying about yeah. Wayne. I don't think he's in a good spot. Uh, Wayne, are you okay? It took, honestly, for me, 15 years before I recognised Wayne Pierce without the tape around his head. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, oh. Latre- here's Latrell Mitchell um, doing some junior rugby league stuff with some kids. Which... Where's the Mercedes? Well, I was just oh, about might, to say this will, there. this will just infuriate all the old cunts that <laughs> write for the Telegraph. Yeah, look, you're a great bloke and all Jamal, but that's not a Mercedes Benz you got there. This might be the Community Award, hey? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, the Prince Stephen one. This is this is the legit good guy award. Yeah, yeah. James Tedesco. No. Don't. <laughs> no, it wasn't going to be about any of the pictures here. I was just going to say, you know, he, he should be getting this award. You know, he's got to hang around Roosters fans. Oh, <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I just put that. Most of the people I know are Roosters fans, so, you know, I love that. You know a Roosters fan? Yeah. I used wow. to work at the Roosters Leagues Club, so I still know lots of Roosters people. Wow, that's pretty amazing. They do exist. Wow. They're pretty chill. They're not like Rabbitohs fans. Well, they'd have to be happy because they, you know, they don't see each other very often. <laughs> that's right. Who's going to get the Ken Stevens medal, do you reckon? Ooh, Toby Rudolph's pretty good. I, I'm going to say Pat Carrigan. Yeah, right, I'm going with either Carrigan or Toby Rudolph. Okay. It, and that, that's based on nothing. <laughs> I'm basing it on nothing. Although I have heard Pat Carrigan's a really, really nice bloke. Like, um, and just a good person. Like, I, I think he'll be the next Australian captain. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a genuine leader, that guy. Yeah. That's, that's beside him being a brilliant footballer too. He's yeah. he's one of the players to watch in the final, grand final. Oh, it's back to Wayne Pierce. And the winner is? 
Canberra. Latrell, the it's Mercedes. Latrell. The Merc gets up. Now, Latrell's not there tonight, so just Give be prepared for a barrage of fucking attack attack pieces by the media on Latrell. Yeah. Why weren't you there, Latrell? They'll be like, he was off gallivanting and he'll be at home with his family. <laughs> <laughs> Lost touch with your people, haven't you, Latrell? While he's <laughs> yeah. out there with his people helping them, he's just out of touch with people that follow the game, and it's like, uh, no, he's actually just at home enjoying himself. It's the yeah. off season, you know? yeah. Yeah, he's just being a human. He's allowed yeah. to be every now and then, you know. So it's, Dylan it's, Edwards uh, is currently leading the Dallium count. We're only at round nineteen, believe it or not. Here comes some more replays. Where's some slow motion? Sure. The other thing, too, the slow motion has to be at times when it's not something important happening. <laughs> Nico Hines r- rubbing his fingers through his hair. That's, slow that's motion. right. That's all right. Nico that's... Hines. People would be screaming double movement for that, and oh, I just want to was... slap him. So that was the highlights of round 19 was Nico Hines <laughs> rubbing his hair. <laughs> there you go. Just before passing the ball. Slow mo. Harry Grant having a good game against the Roosters, but who didn't? <laughs> oh, yeah, Parramatta play, don't they? <laughs> are, are they still in the game? Yeah. Oh, oh, forgot about yeah. Them. Moses kicks a field goal that doesn't matter anymore. Oh, no. Is this their year, Parramatta? <laughs> See last year's answer. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that defence. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> I was I was thinking, wow, that's really good football work by Callum Ponger. And then it was like, yeah, but no one's there. He's stepping no one. That's all right. The target's defence is just move. It's yeah. like muscle memory. Oh, we're going to move here. <laughs> there it is again. Look at that defence. <laughs> He's Ben Hunt trying to fucking... You know why Ben Hunt was playing so well at the end of the year? Because he's trying to get the fuck out of Wollongong. Yeah. He should have started playing crap and just get dropped. They, uh, I know that there's there's two big things that they were talking about with the Dragons this week with uh, Flanagan, two of the big changes he's made. First of all, they're going to stop training in Wollongong. They're going to train at, at um, Cogra Oval. So that's huge. And then the second one is he brought in Mark Taylor, you know, the cricketer. Why? I don't know, but it was it's big. Just trust me on this. It's big. I think he's gonna sell them air conditioners. <laughs> <laughs> Show your favorite air. <laughs> that, that that's one um <laughs> one imitation I could do reasonably well. It is. You remember when he scored uh three hundred and thirty four? Yeah. And it was it's he equaled Don Bradman and 334, and then he declares, right? Yes. And I remember some journo saying, oh, we all watched that game, and we're all going to remember how hard you were trying to beat Bradman's record. And it's like, he's the captain. He he declared. (laughs) He intentionally closed the inning so that he didn't go past that mark. Yeah, like, if he he really wanted to, he could have just kept batting. (laughs) And it's just like, you you fucking pricks. (laughs) The thing that's amazing about that is that he spent about two years prior to that struggling to score any runs at all, and then out yeah. of nowhere, three thirty-four. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was such a a good captain. Oh yeah, and just really changed. I think he changed cricket captaincy a lot, and it's probably got overshadowed by um, Steve War, but I think War War had a finished product to use. You know? That's right. Tubby and especially Alan Border and, and Mark Taylor both sort of did a lot of hard work getting that team up to scratch so that yeah. by the time Steve Wall got it, they were peaked. Yeah. So and they and, stayed there. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, I'm not taking nothing away from Steve Wall. He obviously knows a little bit about cricket, hey? <laughs> Hack. <laughs> Feel oh, like i at the top. Doing a radio interview. Hey, Steve Wall, <laughs> you're pretty good at cricket, hey? <laughs> um, but. But yeah, he like he had all of the perfect 
ammunition to go into test matches with. Whereas, as you say, Mark Taylor was coming off the back of border and, and still building that team. Yeah. There's a bit of change going on in the, uh, the top of the table here. Yeah. It's around 21. Sean Johnson now on 41 points. Drinkwater, 38. Dylan Edwards, Nico Hines, 37. Harry Grant, 35. Adam Reynolds moves up to 34. Drinkwater's now on top. Ooh, imagine if he won it. <laughs> <laughs> now it's back to Sean Johnson again. If he wins it, I will retire Matt Daylight. <laughs> Oh wow! And you know, I, I like I love Matt Daylight. Oh yeah, but Huge I fan. think it's only fair that I retire Matt Daylight if whoever this guy is wins the award. <laughs> this bloke, he goes paint Haas. Yo, it's getting crowded up the top there. Yeah, Nathan Cleary moving up again. Yeah, he's coming coming home with a bullet. Ponga coming home strong too. You know what? Ponga could win it because he finished the season huge. Oh, Sean Johnson just got out to a lead. He's got out to a two-game lead now, seven points. That's yeah. your goal, important. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it footy-related somehow. Johnson after round 23 on 51. Drinkwater, 44. Ponga, 43. Hines, 42. Grant, 41. Cleary, 39. Edwards and Yo, 37. And Haas, 37. Why do Drinkwater and Walsh have a, a Sharks premiership? <laughs> uh, I think they got suspended. Okay, so are they eligible? I don't know. I hope that they are. Oh, they've got Sean Johnson on the stage. They're saying to him, hey, Sean, what do you reckon? You're, you're leading? Are you pumped? And he's yes. like, I fucking hear. He is, uh, you can tell he's pretty pumped. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's pretty. He's getting pretty excited, I reckon. Can you ever remember a turnaround in a player that looked done and then wasn't? I like tell you him? what, the only one that comes close is Benji Marshall when he returned to the West Tigers. Yeah, yeah. And not that he was bad at South, he was very good at South and the Broncos, but you look, you think of what he was like in those last two years at the Tigers before he went to Union, then what he was like at the Dragons. He was barely NRL quality. And at that stage, he also lost his um, lost his step. He put it away. He wasn't doing too much of the trick shot stuff, and he hadn't figured out how to be an actual ball player. Mm. And then Bennett taught him somehow. He went to South, really, really good football when he was at South, and he came to the Tigers and was phenomenal when he returned. Um, but that was over a few years to get to that point. Sean Johnson's turnaround in the space of 12 months has been insane. Yeah. But when he did his Achilles at the Sharks, I just thought, yeah, that's, that's done him. Because he was playing really good at the Sharks until that injury. Really good footy at the Sharks. And then that injury come along and he just, he looked like he lost everything. <clears throat> I thought he might have had a shave before coming here, though. Or actually finished growing his beard. Like, pick one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Microphone. Hmm? My u microphone just yeah. unplugged. Unfortunately, I figured something like that had gone on. Yeah, I, I could to... I could hear you bashing something. Yeah, yeah. It was it was either an intern or a microphone. I thought <laughs> I didn't hear any yelling, so I figured it was just the microphone. I tend to put cigarettes out in the interns, and I don't smoke. <laughs> the things you've had to do. <laughs> <laughs> you had to take up smoking just for this podcast. <laughs> So I'd be shocked if Sean Johnson didn't win it by this point. Like, it kind of, if he doesn't win it, because he had some really good games at the end of the season. If he didn't yeah. win it, it's kind of a screw job, hey? Yeah, something bad's gone on. So there's only four rounds left, and he's out by seven points. So he's got a two-game lead already. It would need somebody to just nail everything. I think mm. Ponga would be in there with a chance. 
good of just getting all the points. Um, I don't think Dylan Edwards has a chance now because those two, like Cleary, I know had a really good couple of games towards the end of the year. Um, Penrith also lost a game too. Mm. Uh, Payne Haas was very good too at the last few rounds. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He is, he is a bit further back though. Did he sit out in that last game, though? Mm, actually, a bunch of them did. Yeah, there was a heap of Broncos they kept out. I can't remember if Payne Haas was one of them. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, God, it was so long ago. <laughs> it, it feels like ages ago, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's weird how finals games, they just they've got their own timeline. Oh. So they're, they're pumping grand final day on Fox. I wonder what's going on here. Oh, everyone's, it's, it's piss break time. It seems like it. Yeah. Not enough alcohol being consumed at this stage. Do you reckon that clubs say to players don't drink? Um. Yeah, they say, look, can you keep it just to light beer? Mm. Um. We want the fans to see that you do drink alcohol like normal humans, but we also don't want you to make a fucking fool of yourself on TV. <laughs> True. So can we just have a happy medium here? I think if I was a player, I would, I would be... By the, my third Dally M's, I'd just be going and getting fucking tanked. <laughs> just turn up and you're on the red carpet holding a Woodstock. <laughs> <laughs> Who would be the first player to do that? That'd be pretty cool. That'd be the way to do it. I mean, we need a player that turns up on the red carpet and they're wearing overalls. When somebody says, why are you wearing overalls? They say, because I'm always working to become better. <laughs> Just a little <laughs> jerk. <laughs> overalls with a black tie. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm always working on my craft. <laughs> You never stop. Actually, just turn up in the gear, in the in the plane gear. Yeah, that'd be interesting doing that, hey? Kind of like how um, Formula One drivers are always wearing Formula One gear every time they're seen somewhere. True. They don't do anything other than wear Formula One gear for their team. The only thing more awkward than a watch ad for a Formula One driver is any men's perfume ad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or any Mercedes-Benz ad that Lewis Hamilton is involved in. Yeah. Because it's just him doing random poses, but nothing else. Can you lean on the car a bit harder, Lewis? (laughs) Just just sort of rest your backside against it and then just give us a mean look while putting your hand on your chin. Yeah. Hmm, Thinking. Strong thinking pose. Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw a video, I didn't watch it, but I saw a video on YouTube today that, that I had to bring up to you where it was um, somebody was interviewing um, Mark Webber about his intense rivalry with Sebastian Vettel. Oh, yes. And it's like, what rivalry? <laughs> he fucking, the only time he won races was when Vettel fucked up. Yes. <laughs> like, there wasn't a rivalry, man. <laughs> No, the only the only really intense thing they had was multi twenty one. Yeah, <laughs> multi twenty one. It's like shut up, idiot! I just want to go and pray. He always says, "Oh, obviously, Red Bulls just decided that um, Sebastian's their number one driver." Going well, you know, he won four world pre- world titles. How many you yeah. <laughs> Probably because he's in front of the entire pack, including you in the same car, dickhead. <laughs> Yeah, he was a bit of a whiny one, that one. Ugh. It was funny because when, you know, in the first year or two after he left Formula One, mm-hmm. and what was it 2014 when Ricardo moved into Red Bull into the top seat? Yeah. It was only a year or two after Weber had been there, I think, from memory. Or he might have even replaced Weber. Mm-hmm. Um, the first race that Vettel won or was on the podium for just happened to be the race where Weber was the person doing the um, post-race interviews with the drivers. Mm. And everyone's going, oh, I wonder what sort of interview they're going to ask here. And Weber's like, yeah, how you going, mate? And he's like, yeah, not too bad, mate. How you doing, man? <laughs> like chatting like old mates. He's going, oh, we've kind of opened that like punch or something. 
No, they're fine. Oh, Bracey, the doctor. West Tigers legend. <laughs> he, even he smiled at that one. To be fair, he says that his time at the West Tigers wasn't great. Well, he so. didn't really contribute much to that being any better than shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he didn't mind the money. Who had a better West Tigers career? Brayton Astor or Terry Hill? Terry Hill, comfortably. Okay. Comfortably. Who had a, best, who had a better West Tigers career? Brayton Astor or Scott Sattler? Sattler, just. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm, just, now I'm trying to think of it. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, now you can't think of any more West Tigers players. I, I was going to say Josh Reynolds, but f- f- fucking nah. Ooh, that's actually not a, that's a pretty tough one. I'd probably have to go with an Astor on that one. Yeah, that, that, it's definitely an Astor. That's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I can't think of any more that are around that, like going to the, the West Tigers at the very end of their career, you know? Jason Tomalolo. <laughs> you wish. I wish. <laughs> uh, Tamika Upton, NRLW fullback of the year. They're doing the teams of the year now. That's not a big shock. She's a very good player. Bring it. I wouldn't be shocked if she won the whole lot, to be honest. Jacaya Whitfield, winger of the year. I just think that, that it'd be so cool if they had their own night, just completely different event, like a a women's event. It'd be awesome. It would be. Yeah. Julia Robertson, winger of the year. Oh, that's right. They do the whole team now. They used to, in the um the nineties. Mm. They just had won award for the winger of the year. So the winger of the year was mm. the best of all wingers. But now they're doing actual team, so you get actual 13 players up there. They should have a knife fight to sort it out now. <laughs> <laughs> no, a race. Yeah, that would work. Foot race. The wingers have a foot race, and the props just have a like a race where they just run into one another, whoever hits the ground. That's it. Isabel Kelly, centre of the year. I mean, she's always been a brilliant centre, so you know. Yeah. She's got. She's one of the few not wearing black. She's gone with the pink. Yeah. Man, why can't some of the NRL the blokes wear pink? That'd be interesting. Who'd be the first that, one to wear pink? Um. Reese Walsh. Reese Walsh. Nah, it'd be Moses Leota. Leo, do you reckon? Yeah. I reckon Walsh because he wears pink boots. Well, there you yeah, go. he does, actually. He does. Um, or someone, actually, you know what? High vis yellow. That has to happen sometime. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> With Taryn Aiken, five of the year, she's going to go close to winning the uh, top gong as well. Yeah. She's had a pretty good season. So I guess we're close to finding out the NRLW Player of the Year. Yeah, so I think from memory they do the Team of the Year and then we get to the final rounds. And okay. what we will find is that they won't name... Yeah, you know, there's a few people vying for a certain position. They won't name that position winner until the actual player award's done. So if it was two halfbacks at the end, mm-hmm. then we're not going to name who the halfback of the year is because it might give away who the actual wins the top goal. Yeah, yeah. But I did see something at the start saying that they were going to give um, awards for team of the year separate to the actual points. So it might be different this okay. year. Okay. But it'd still be... It'd still probably be a fairly good guide, I guess. If you're going to get named as the, you know, in the team of the year, you're probably a fair chance of winning the top gong, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there was one year with the Dally M's where you, by who they named in the team of the year, you knew who would want it. Yeah. 
I can't remember what year it was, but uh, I, I definitely remember thinking like, oh, well, if it's like, say, the fullback. If that's fullback of the year, he's won it, you know? That's all right. I thought Brayton Ass was looking at his watch then. <laughs> Why? <laughs> he is looking at his watch. I'm sure of it. Oh, oh, she must have an injury. Yeah. Oh, man, this is rough. Let's all wait until she's got up the steps and then we'll jump up to help her. <laughs> I don't know what the hairpiece is, but from the camera, it looked like a party hat, unfortunately. You know, she'd bash a little bit shit out of me, so I'm just going to say it looks great. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm watching on a smaller screen than you, so... <clears throat> yeah, I'm not too sure what it was either, but... Um... Oh. Big ups to the, to the female players too, because they're not all wearing the same crap like the men are. Yeah. They've put a bit of effort into this. Plenty of um of newer players to the, the top you know, the NRL women's top game as well that are getting awards here. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see. Got a bunch of the season seasoned um veterans in there. So it shows that, that that quality of player coming through is coming through at a higher level, skill level to start with. Yeah. Um is Taufa. She's going to go close to win the top top gong as well again. One of the interesting things I, I found watching the NRLW this year was that how many, like, really young players they had in most of the teams, you know? Yeah. Um, That was really cool to see. And, that, like, that's obviously one of the things that happens with the expansion. You have to use more of your extended squads or, or players that maybe wouldn't have got a run before. That now they're getting their chances. And it's just really good to see, as you say, it's like, especially coming out of COVID where everything was shut down and stuff, it, it shows that those junior pathways are, are fully back open for the women's game, which is fantastic. Yeah, and given that it's a longer season, they're also using more players as well uh, within each club or two. So yeah, um, it's only going get, to get stronger and stronger there. Are we doing the men's team of the year? We're looking at the Dallium leaderboard at the moment. Just, you know, take up a bit more time. Because, you know, we've got all fucking night. <laughs> <laughs> so, Braith and Astor is talking about how some of these plays are really good. Now we get... Okay, here we go. What round is this, by the way? 24. Okay, so we're getting there. Joan Edwards moved up. DCE's coming home. Oh, DCE had a real good end to the season. Yeah. Payne Haas charges up. He's down the top five. Nico Hines. He's in Ooh. the second place. Ooh. Ponga takes it off him. Harry Grant. Harry Grant's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> this happened. Sean Johnson. I mean, that's got to be it for Sean Johnson, right? No, he's, he's now within... They're now within uh, equaling now because he's only got a six-point lead now. Sean Johnson. And still two rounds. He is trying so hard to keep it together, but he's so fucking excited. It's so funny to see. Oh, yeah. If Ponga, Grant, or Hines get six, Johnson will be having a little bit of poo come out. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Hines. Ooh. Not enough. It's not far off, but not enough. Callan Ponga. Oh, he's only, now Ponga's only two behind Johnson, but Johnson didn't get it. Oh, he said, he said, oh, fuck. Yeah, I I think he's not going to win it now. I think it's going to go to Ponga. There's two rounds to go? Yeah, we had round 27 this year, didn't we? Yeah. But two rounds to go. And Sean Johnson has a two-point lead. He looked like he signaled to someone that they were going to win it, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
Now we're doing team of the year. Okay. Well, geez, they, they really fuck this around, <laughs> eh? Holy shit. Chop on change of this. Ponga gets a gets a kiss from his manager's wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's a complex relationship you've got going on over there. Well, Teddy's the Lesniak, winger of the year. Winger of the year? How how many years was he just coasting? He oh. has had a very good year this year, though. There's no doubt about it. But he was coasting for years after he left Penrith. Yeah. Like he's, I still say his best year was probably his last year at Penrith. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, this year he has been very strong. Sarko, winger of the year. I mean, he's... He almost didn't have an NRL career after he left the Broncos. Or was it the Titans? No, when he left uh, the Broncos, he went to the Titans and he was barely playing first grade there. And then the Dolphins yeah. gave him a lifeline. And then he's fucking gunned it this year. Yeah. Crichton, center of the year. Stephen Crichton. He's been amazing this year. Needs a haircut. <laughs> it's good to see him doing well because he's showing the, the, the downtrodden, crime-ridden youth of Western Sydney. Absolutely. Happy As Farmworth. Herbie Farmworth does for the crime-ridden, downtrodden youth of Northern England. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder what part of England he's from. I could look it up. I bet it's the shit part. I might as well look at that. Thirty five eighth of the year. I'm not opposed to that. Yeah, he's he's a really good player. I love watching him play. He's got a good step on him too, man. Mm. He's from Burnley. What did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> you could have said anywhere. And I, oh, no. what I tell you. <laughs> he's from Ramsbottom. <laughs> yep, I told you. Oh yeah. Sean Johnson, halfback of the year. He he looks a bit disappointed now because I think he kind of feels like he's not going to win the Dally M. Well, that means that uh I don't know, it's not it would probably mean it's not going to be Cleary or uh Hines. It's yeah, it's not going to be Edwards. It's not going to be drink water. This bloke's a chance. Harry Grant. It's not going to be Matt Daylight. Who was the other one that was there? Um, Payne Haas. Yeah. Payne Haas is still in oh, there. Oh, Ponga's on here as well. So Ponga's. Yep, Ponga, yep. There Payne he is. Haas, prop of the year. He has to have a monster game on Sunday. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. He's going to be the biggest human on the field. Yeah. He has to have the best game of his career. This bloke has had a pretty good season too. Fenua Blake. Hey, man, big ups for the shirt. Yeah, yeah, I like the shirt. I'm digging the shirt. Black and gold, that would be a good colour scheme for a website, hey? Absolutely. I reckon. I reckon someone should do that. Done. I know a guy. Yeah. I don't know which website it is. He's got a few of them, but it's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Leo Martin, second rower of the year. That's well-deserved. He's played very well this year. He has. Taking his game to a new level. Really off the back of the World Cup last year, where he was about the best player in the World Cup, probably behind Luai only. David Fafida. That's a bit of a surprise. What? <laughs> I didn't even know he was attending the awards. He didn't even bother with a tie. Is he? Yeah, he's he one of the top ten players at the he, fucking Titans he, this year. He should be turned away at the step because he doesn't have a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Suitable attire only. This is the furthest I've seen him go all year. <laughs> <laughs> Has he even got white shoes on? Does he? I I like white shoes. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah, he does. I'm back in. (laughs) 
lock of the year, Paddy Carrigan. So that's Isaiah Yo out of it, but I think he was already out of it. Yeah. You got a bit of bark off him too. Yeah. That, that's just the Paddy way. There you are, team of the year. Pat Harrigan shaking everyone's hand. It's like, yeah, fellas, that's right. Lock okay. of the year. And then he gets to David Feeder and he's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get one of these? Well, that's our NRL team of the year, and now we're going to find out our players of the year. Are you excited? Um, Sure. <laughs> I was excited 45 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us is the other one in the room clapping near for some reason. <laughs> we just realised he was caught out. Okay, we're doing the female player of the year now. Now that we've got everyone standing on stage, obviously it's going to be one of those people. Who have they got presenting it? I didn't see that, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so we've got... Taufa, 21 points. Taryn Aiken, 20. Tegan Berry, 20. Ali Brigginshaw, 18. I don't know. They've got, I think they've got three, three rounds? Two rounds. I, I can't remember now. I think Tamika Upton's going to win it. Here we go. So no changes at the top so far. Starting to get a bit crowded at the top, though. It is, yeah. Brigginshaw. Brigginshaw moves to one within the lead. Taufa takes takes another point. Ooh, Upton. Upton with six. Now she's leading. You can't yeah. bet on the Dally M's anymore, can you? No. Yeah. I think it's because they found out that someone at the NRL actually knew who won it anyway. <laughs> was it the the year Jack Whiten got it? I can't remember. Remember they revealed who who won it before the actual thing aired. Yeah, I can't I can't remember what year that, or what time. Taryn Aiken's now at the top, twenty six. She's skipping away. Here we go. Is this the last round? Ooh, Upton back in front for one. And she's done it. She's done it. I called it. She's she's got the gold. Do you know who that is that's given her the award? No. Yeah, neither do I. I'm not good at picking people's faces, though. Yeah. I don't mind picking at people's faces. It's... <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's she's a fantastic player, so it's good to see her win the award. Oh, absolutely. And as I said, like, she, she's had a, she had a very good year this year, so it's... um The, the system has worked in this, this time. <laughs> <laughs> this time. It's this not like it breaks down when we, you know, the NRL gets the who they want in the grand finals. <laughs> well, the referees decide who they want in the grand finals. You should know that. <laughs> <laughs> who is the referee in the NRL grand final? Uh, oh, man, I can't remember who it, it was. Is it Cummins? No. No, it wasn't Cummins. It was... Oh, it was who you were talking about before. Yeah, I know. I can't remember his name. Yeah, I can't remember. Grant Atkins, no. Yes. Is he the one that's that was apparently came from the Penrith referees juniors thing or something like that? And everyone thought, oh, he's Penrith. No, no, it's just very good. He's referees training. So <laughs> yeah, you know. All right, we're into the men's one. Here we go. Nathan Cleary moves up a little bit. Vanilla Blake loses it, moves up a little bit. Not near the top, but still something. DCE. Ooh. DCE makes a big move up the board. Drink water. Oh, my goodness. Your boy. Your boy. Oh, Harry, one point. That's not going to do it, mate. That's not, not enough for Harry Grant. Harry Grant's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Quick smile. 
I would love it if one of these players got really filthy about losing. Sean Johnson just looks sad now. <laughs> he's making me he's, sad every yeah, time he, I see him. He's looking at Pogba going, you've got this. He I'm was done. so happy before, and now he just looks sad. Ooh. Three points. Ponga needs to get man of the match in the last round. I think he will. Or Drinkwater does. That's all it's down to. I think Ponga was man of the match in the last round, hey? He was. He's done it. I told you. Oh, no, there's still one more round left. Fuck. Man, this is getting close. I, I think Ponga's just... going to get it. I, is this it? That's it. Looks, yep. Yeah, Callum Ponga. Dalian Player of the Year, 2023. Man, that shimmy goal on the left side has finally fooled enough judges and he's got the top goal. Well done. The show and go on the left. <laughs> like, first of all, like to thank the manager, <laughs> his wife. <laughs> I like to thank Sean Johnson. He's over to my fucking right hand side crying. Thanks for those tears. Just to all of New Zealand. Here's another one you didn't win. <laughs> Here for the ice creams. <laughs> I just want to leave you all with a word my manager said to me. He said, take the Knights money because the Australian Rugby Union won't have any. <laughs> yeah. And clean your room. <laughs> <laughs> he does the see ya. That's fantastic. Well, you know, he did, he did have a very good end to the year. You know, what we're seeing more and more of is... Uh, Players who have a good second half of the year, they just pile on points with judges, hey? They do, yeah. Like, they, it just becomes... We've seen that for a number of seasons now. So now Ponga's... What, hey, what now? Oh, getting shot. <laughs> getting yeah. shot. <laughs> Yvonne Sampson is like, Kalen, come back over here and stand right fucking there. <laughs> yeah. Do I have to do every fucking thing here? <laughs> carry the stupid fucking microphones. I'm gonna get you two together on the screen so I've got you on the final shot. I'm gonna get the angle grinders going. Yeah, just don't don't look directly into it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. They're all holding their medals. Do that chew on now? It's been a great night, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Um did you get any awards? No, but, well, like, what award would you like for tonight? Um, best hustle. Best hustle, hey? Yeah, to get here for this podcast. <laughs> Did you have to rush? It was a bit of hustle. Oh, shit. I got off the bus yeah. at 10 past 7. Yeah. And then it was a five-minute walk to the house. Yeah. Little fellow was a bit cranky. Had to have oh. a shower with him. Calmed him down. Got him all good. Yep. Put his PJs on. Yeah. Get him in bed, lying in bed. He's looking at me like he's about to go to sleep. He's that goddamn tired. And he starts talking oh, and no. talking and then getting up and then moving around, shuffling around. And I go, yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to go. So I just got up and went, I'm going to go, buddy. And he waves. I was like, oh, See ya. that's so cute. That's what he does. And then I come in and start recording. And I don't know if he's asleep or not. But I'm here. I put <laughs> you people ahead of my people. I look forward to the message half an hour from now saying we're driving around the suburb looking for him, hey. He's <laughs> out there somewhere. He took the cat. He's riding the cat. He'll be fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll end it with, with something that he does that's very cute. Okay. He's, he's starting to count. Okay. Okay. And this is how he counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, chicken. Eight, nine, ten. I say it counts to ten. Well, I'll tell you what. If he counts like that, the Melbourne Storm will have him doing their books in no time. Mate, if, if I can get him to do that and record it, we should be able to get a sponsorship with the Porto. That would be that, fantastic. That would be good. They can even make it part of their, uh, you know, part of an advertising campaign. <laughs> Five, six, chicken. Five, six, chicken. Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed our rambling Dally M episode. 
we've done well. There's actually less quiet points in there than when I'm doing a normal episode and I start looking at stats and stuff at the tail end of an episode. <laughs> so we've done pretty well. Um, um, this, this feels like what our YouTube episodes used to feel like, hey? <laughs> Just random conversation. Yeah, when we first started. Yeah. We go, yeah. right, we've got one talking point, and we get through that in three minutes ago. Right, we're going to do for the rest of the hour. <laughs> um, well, we're back looking at the Wink stand. Well, what did they keep going to this that, race course place for? I've got no fucking idea. I didn't know that's where they held it. It's yeah, so they've, been, they've been here for the last few years. Wow, Braith got out of there pretty fucking quick. Is this the... Is this got to be pre-recorded? No, this is the NRL 360... Whatever. I don't know what the hell this is. Does, is it live? Yeah, it's got to be live. I don't know. Well, good on him. And good if on Gordon under- Tallis, too. Hey, just for no reason. <laughs> no, not good on Gordon Tallis. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, thank you to everyone for listening. Um, yes. This could be our last episode until the grand final. Are we recording grand final night? Um, well, the, for the, probably the day following, hey, because the grand final ends pretty late. Yeah, look, we we, we probably could play, uh, record on uh, grand final night. Depends on how you're feeling, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're if the Panthers win, I'll probably get you in a drunken stupor, <laughs> which everyone will want me to do. Mm-hmm. And if the Panthers lose, we'll probably get you in a drunken stupor, whichever yeah. I want to hear, but a sad one. Well, I've I've always fronted up when they do lose a, a big one. I, I yes. pride myself on that. That's so, right. uh, so we'll see what happens. I, I like it's it's an interesting one. I feel like it should be fifty fifty, but at the same time, there's a lot of things that go in Penrith's favour. So. Will you hate Brisbane and everything that exists in that area if the Broncos win? No, I won't. Oh, I won't. fuck this, man. This is what people want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this it would be... have you on here raging for the next whole fucking year until you get retribution. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. It, it Like, you know, I'd, I'd be so happy for Kevin Walters. And just, you know what I keep thinking of is, remember when under Anthony Seabold, how poorly he had that club where... There was one game where players were literally crying on the field after the game. Yes. And I keep thinking about that moment. And a lot of those players aren't there now, but some of them are. And I think what it must would be like for those players to go from them lows and all that pressure and all that, you know, because that was supposed to be the next big thing with, with Penrith. And to go from that to winning a grand final would be – I mean, if it was any other club, we'd be saying it would be a fairy tale, you know. What Brisbane have done is an absolute fairy tale already. But because it's the Broncos, we don't think of it that way. Um, so I, I wouldn't hate them or anything. There's no one in this Brisbane team that I kind of don't like. There's a lot of players there. I really like Herbie Farnworth, hey, and Ezra Mam and it plays like that. So um, I really like watching Katoni Staggs play. You know, so there's a lot of players there that I, I like. I like watching Reese Walsh play, um, but we'll see. <laughs> It'd be funny if I come on now after day one and I was filthy. Hey, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, look, we'll we'll wrap this one up. Thanks for tuning, in, everyone. Hope you enjoyed uh, our live commentary. Ish. It won't be live by the time you hear it, but you know, whatever. Um, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you all next time.